Welcome back to the channel, everyone. I'm Rustin. I'm Jameson. And we are on the Earth Dwellers Homestead channel. Today, we're going to be discussing our compost heater and checking out temperatures, some modifications possibly, and in general, just keeping compost warm in winter. Now, it's been about three months that we've had this pile going. So we have had some ups and downs with it. I like to share observations and just in general, how it's going. So if that sounds interesting, please consider subscribing to the channel. It really helps us out. We have some cool things coming to the home that you guys helped us achieve just by watching and liking and sharing teeter-tottering on this seat. So if that sounds interesting, please consider subscribing. We've got hundreds and hundreds of comments to filter through. So we are slowly getting back to everybody. So just jumping out to our compost pile here. I have dug out like a foot. I see steam coming. I saw like 89, 87. I'm going to cover that bad boy back up. Oh. Ooh, physically warm in there. Some moldy looking stuff. Oh, that was maybe a foot and a half in there. We definitely formed a nice crust of dry material on this uh, southern facing side here. And I had pulled the tarp back. So I got to come out here and water. We didn't get a whole lot of snow. It's been super cold. This is all like frozen melting mud it's like 20 degrees outside for a high today we got a new roof on the shed let's get back in here it's freezing nice little snack in the greenhouse we had ourselves some pine needle tea brewing that's quite refreshing pine needle tea has a lot of vitamin c it's quite good for you so i wanted to show the temps outside before it got too dark we got maybe a half hour of ambient light left and we've got our greenhouse lights on in here all our grow lights behind me here we have all of the compost heating transfer systems if you're new to the channel if you followed along for the build of this you know exactly what this stuff is anyways we kept a 45 which is about seven degrees celsius i believe that's the temps we kept on the floor on the ground on our plants throughout a polar vortex where we saw negative teens to almost negative 20 for a extended period of time, a couple days. I mean, it was freezing for over a week, but those really, really cold temps just blasted us hard and most of the country got even worse. Those temperatures came from a culmination of things, our geothermal compost heating, our wood stove, which we burned on those negative temperature nights, thermal mass that we used our stove to heat up, greenhouse fish pond, like 300 plus gallons, We've got lots of thermal mass throughout the greenhouse, solar, passive and active solar powered heating systems. Obviously compost heating has been one of my favorites. So that is the one we have focused on and really tried to nail down to a science for ourselves. And it's always a learning curve. Every year has been different every single year. And we've been living this kind of lifestyle for about 10 years now. So there's a lot of compost piles that I've built to try and harvest the heat from. Now, as you notice, we did lose sunlight and I shut my systems off before the sun actually waned so I could have some battery power banked. I wanted to show that pile outside so I could kind of talk about the crust and how things are operating. Even though we have that crust protecting it, the inside is pretty moist. So we're doing all right in that aspect, but we lost a lot of mass, a lot of material to forming that crust because we didn't insulate our pile. If we would have insulated it, we wouldn't have had such a crust form. It might've been like a one inch, not a one foot crust. If you don't insulate your pile, the pile will insulate itself for you and you'll lose a lot of material and a lot of fuel as a result. We spent a good bit of energy trying to get the flow rate correct on this water heating system through compost because it's very important you don't want to overflow because you can overdraw the pile overflow the system and really cool it down and negatively impact it so we should have hooked up our solar controller by now or our motor speed controller here i haven't hooked one up yet and i'm not going to hook it up tonight but i'm going to tomorrow here but come out and show temperatures tonight so i shut the system off i'm going to be doing a little bit of maintenance hooking up the little speed controller so i can dial the flow i've shown it a ton of times and i've shown how to hook it up how to build this little junction box i've shown everything this little test box here anyways we do have a couple videos you guys can check out that show how these operate go ahead and kick the water pump on and try and get some temperatures here Right. All right, we've got water. So it's at 82, 
82.7. Oh. The tank itself is sitting 62 degrees. Now, I'm gonna kick on our fans because I shut our fans off too. So we are pushing about, what's that say? Almost 80 degrees. Almost 80, yeah. My face is 108 degrees. Your face is 108 degrees? Yeah. Sitting too close to the fire, face is gonna melt off. And I'm looking kind of rough this week. Anyways, I wanted to come out and show these temperatures at the three month mark. I'll share a few ideas and things that I do in winter to promote a warmer, more active compost pile. Now keeping it in a sunny location is very pertinent. Having the sun, it dries it out, but it also warms it up even in winter. Using a clear poly on it, I've got a black tarp. It does the same thing, except the poly makes a greenhouse effect. So the sunlight actually enters and it makes it a little bit warmer than a black tarp. I didn't have my piece of poly on there. I do have a large poly cover for the compost. I just was planning on capping it with more material, just never got around to it. It got too cold. Most importantly, insulating. Insulating the top, the bottom, the sides, building a nice straw bed, wood chip bed, anything to separate it from the cold hard ground, sucking heat right out of it. And nitrogen dumping in winter, making a slurry, taking a five gallon bucket and using a drill to stir it up or any method you have. Used a lot of things over the years to get nitrogen solid and liquid form all into the pile. Urea, chicken poo, yard waste, your own urine. You see my breath here, we're close to the door and this door is cracked, I can see it. We're gonna have to seal that up and really warm the greenhouse up tonight. It's not gonna be very warm, down into the single digits. And another interesting thought and idea that I'm going to experiment with myself is either having a dugout area so I can get some natural thermophilic draw to aid my solar powered systems, the water and the air moving system. The hot will come back up as the cold goes down into the pile and exchange it. But with that, I would like to use metal parts that I could use for virtually ever. Just put a nice metal pipe in the ground for air or for water and then I can stir it up around it. I can just constantly mix my compost pile. That would be the best result for a smaller type system. There's no mixing 12 tons, 11, 12 tons of compost out back. So I'd like to get more nitrogen to it. I may bring a nitrogen dump video just to see what happens and share everything with everybody. I'm trying to share every step of this. We've just been letting it run for the last three months. And I had it uncovered. If we have any snow, any rain, let that moisture get in. You don't wanna block out the moisture. And the most important thing is a minimal draw of heat. You wanna figure out how much you can pull, how many BTUs you need, how many you want to use, and how many you can create with the size of pile you have. We have a ton of videos covering pile size, pile duration burn, and all of the compost heating aspects when it comes to the actual compost itself. So just simply keeping water from not freezing in winter. Lots of cool experiments that are coming down the pipe here. Long week with the freezing temps. So we've got ourselves a nice hot fire going. Nice to sit by this. All of our lights make a really good backdrop. And all of our tunnel lights just kicked on too. So we've got a pretty decently lit up greenhouse at nighttime. <laughs> it looks pretty cool from outside here. So before this video gets too darn long here, I'm gonna let you guys go. We've got a lot of cool experiments coming. I've got popcorn to eat and tea to drink. Thank you guys for watching.